Excellent. We're here at the new. Thirty millimeter silver. This is nine 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 pure. That's the pure silver you can get. Wow. Nine nine nine. These are planchettes. I want you to look and see. See the raised edge on both sides because this started life as a blank. Then it was put into a machine that turned it into a planchette. French work for this design. It's thicker on the edge. The reason being the third die, the collar die, right in here. And that was an invention of a famous man in the late 1600s, Sir Isaac Newton, to eliminate people shaving the coin. So that third collar die puts the ridges on the outside rim of the coin. It's referred to as reading. And you have your top die and your bottom die come together and this little added silver splits out and it gets the lines on it. And it happens very quickly. The machine now though is slow because of its electricity. In its lifetime running on steam power, it could run 120 silver, it could do 100 silver dollars a minute up to 125 dimes. Wow. The last time the machine was used in San Francisco in 1955 at nine dimes, I can tell. Because in the hole, just the dime slot. This would be the loading tube. I mean, the bottom. It had a drop tube right here. A piece of equipment we had to take off because it stuck out too far. Would shuttle the coins one at a time into the machine. The machine would strike them. Count. The coin would slide down and end up in the back on the floor. 1,000 coins, silver dollars, weighed 50, 56 pounds. 52. So this is a good time to introduce Wendy <laughs> Davis and Jan <laughs> Davis, the volunteers here at the Nevada State Museum. I'm Myron Friedman. I'm the director. And you are here today at the historic Carson City Mint. Right. The Mint opened in 1870, and it operated until 1893. And it is uh, one of the most historic buildings in the state of Nevada, and we're proud today to have it as the Nevada State Museum. But the most unique thing about the Carson City Mint today is coin press number one, and I think Woody's got a story for you about that. Right, this is machine number one. Well, this is rare in the world of American minting. This is the only mint of the seven United States mints that is still open and closed in its original building. This is the original building opened on January the 7th of 1870. The machine is a Morgan and Orr steam powered press. There's only four left in the world. They're all in museums. Sadly for the other three, this is the only one that works and it weighs 12,000 pounds. It's what's called a 110 ton press. The flywheel alone over here weighs a thousand pounds. This gives the inertia to coin the, the, the strike. This is a German invented knuckle joint press. There's a ball in there about the size of a baseball, solid steel. And when you'll see when it runs, the machine rotates like this, and that causes the pressure that that mints the coin. When the museum, when the mint opened in 1870, this was the only coin press here in the mint. There were eventually three, but from 1870 to 1875, this was the only one. Only one. So all CC minted coins, 1870 through 74, were done on this press. Eventually, two more presses were here. But then what happened, Woody, in 1877-78? Much to our chagrin, the machine cracked right here. We figured the arch cracked right here, making the machine useless for us. Now, Morgan and Ork is in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, quite a long way away. The shipping charges would have just broke us. <laughs> Luckily for us, across the street were the yards of the famous Virginia City and Truckee Railroad. They had a casting plant. I'm told it was 49 men. A large casting plant. 
they came over, they took the unit over, all 12,000 pounds of her, and cast a whole new case for the sum of $800. That was the price to cast a whole new case for it. Now, they were so impressed with their own work that they <laughs> took the Morgan and Orr plate off and put their own name on the federal government machine. <laughs> Virginia and Truckee Railroad Works, Carson, Nevada, 1878. This is the reason we got it back. Because it ended up its life in San Francisco in 1955. San Francisco was getting some new equipment. They were going to get rid of all the old equipment. A fellow went over that was a coin collector, noticed this plate made a phone call up to the museum and said, I think I found your original machine number one. And there she is. And we get her for the scrap price of $225. <laughs> and who gets it? Who goes down and gets it? A trucking company by the name of? Wells Car And they did it for free. They were standing <coughs> here in Carson City and they bought it. So it's, a, you know, it's a great Nevada story. Right. It only happened. This could only happen in Nevada. Wells Cargo or Wells Fargo? Wells Fargo. <laughs> Wells Fargo. It's Wells Cargo, yeah. Nice. So today you are here because you're the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency and you are minting a special medallion on Corn Press Number One to commemorate not just Lake Tahoe but the depth of Lake Tahoe. Um, and all the great work that's gone on with their partners to preserve the lake. Um, and so we're really happy to be a part of that process. And we're starting off with a 30 millimeter half ounce pure silver planchette, as Woody explained earlier. And when this mint was in full operation, there was a team of people working here. And they all had very specialized jobs. And one of the most important jobs was called the adjuster. And the adjuster, Adjusters were always women, and that goes back to when minting first began. And so today we have our adjuster, Jan, who can tell you a little bit about the work they did. Well, we were coming in the morning in our street clothes and changed into a uniform along with a big, heavy leather apron. The apron would be attached here. You can still see this is an original cable, and it would be attached right along here. That was so that any of dust would stay on the table. We would get the blanks and we would check them for weight. And if we thought they were too heavy because we women are very sensitive to that, if it was heavy, we would check it in a bucket and they would melt it down and do more. If it was too light, the light would go away. I'm sorry, the light would put in there and the, the heavy one we would apply it. We also had a little tiny scale here that kept the operating. At the end of the day, we would go home, take off our apron, take off, uh, put our clothes back on that we walked in with, and then every few months or so, they would take those things and burn them and get all of the dust. Hmm. The golden silver dust. Yeah. We also made the same amount of money per day as a miner did. And then at the very end of the year, Wow. They taught us how to do the machine. The only thing we couldn't do was set it up. Abraham <laughs> Curry, the founder of Carson City, his daughter, Elira, was the floor supervisor for 16 years. Wow. Now, for labor intensiveness, a silver planchette could be graded by the woman with no checking, but a gold planchette, each one, had to be verified by a supervisor. So that took double work for each gold coin we made here. That makes sense. More value. So he was going to be our first coiner today. And come on, I'm back here. I'm going to ask you to put on a pair of gloves. Excellent. Now, my question is, who's going to get coin number one? You guys have plans for coin number one? We do have plan for coin number one, um, but I don't remember who it is. But well, I mean, coin number one, we can autograph that in the car. I don't think they brought the cards. Oh, they did. Did you bring cards today? 
No, it's just blink envelopes. Just the plastic. Ah! Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to give you the official planchette. And what I like to point out about the planchettes is they're not perfect. You can kind of see they have a patina and they might even be a little scratched. So when you mint it, your pristine Lake Tahoe is going to be full of all of this scratching on it. What are you going to do? What do we do? I don't know. Actually, <laughs> this machine is magically going to remove all of the imperfections. <laughs> it's so it's going to be a pristine Lake Tahoe. Come That's here. Right. And does it weigh the right amount? I wish I were an adjuster. Are you like to take over? Can, 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 can we tell? Is this the right amount? Uh, does anybody have a silver dollar in their pocket? <laughs> half dollar. Oh, half dollar. <laughs> Uh, this is 30 millimeters, it's a half ounce, and um, the reason we meant this size, because people used to get the dollar size, is because our primary job is to take care of the coin press. It's, it's you know, the most precious and historic artifact in the museum. Right. And so by minting this size, this machine has no problem uh, continuing to operate, you know, pretty much indefinitely minting something that size. So that's why we shrunk down the, uh, the planchette size. Okay. So Woody will show you where to go. Here we go. Let me find Chet. Now we'll just take that. Here we go. Don't get afraid of it. You got your gloves on. All right. You're going to hold the table. You're going to do you take it. And you're going to slide it. And you're going to put it right in that hole. Right. And make sure everything is seated. Then you're going to come over here. And I'm going to stand back and I'll tell you when that, to let go. So he can take the whole picture and you can look at him. Okay. You don't have to look here. You'll look at him and then I'll tell you when to take your hands off. And Sounds you good. And if you look in here, you can actually see yeah, part of the die. It's pretty cool looking. There it is. There's the side of Lake Tahoe. Here, here. I have a special thing. So this will be the first out of 1,645 coins that will be minted to commemorate the depth of Lake Tahoe, 1,645 feet. Oh, perfect. So we'll slide that in here. Here we go. Right. Here we go. Now, first one. Full hands here. Number one. All right. At the same time. Are you ready? Okay. Here we ready? go. Go. Oh. Hands off. Now let's finish from here. The cycle. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't pop. Nope. It's all right. <laughs> I got. I got the special. Experienced this before. Oh, every now and then. Now, remember the blah, 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 the patina? Yeah. There's Lake Tahoe. This is called a. This is a polished field with a frosted background, and that's what happens with 110 tons of pressure. See that? Wow. Beautiful. There's. I, I have to put my glasses on. Let me see. Oh, and in here fact, it is. I think yeah. the artist Eleanor Bonbon is watching right now, there so she go. can see her work live. There it is. There's the date down on the bottom, and over here, there's Lake Tahoe. Boom. Where's right the CC? CC down is by Emerald Bay. Oh. Right by Emerald Bay, right there. That, I think that's the California. Okay, California. We've got California, Nevada, Nevada, and then. And then. Marvin, where is it? I think it's down right in this corner. Oh, there you go. There it is, right there, down at the bottom. This is the first one I see. <laughs> that he's been seeing. Here's the and first what do you one think? I, I think it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really well, gorgeous. You can this get is this normally a different thing than we do in the sense a lot of our coin is a mirror background with a frosted field. Uh, but because it's a lake, and I'm sure they wanted it to shine, right? it's the reverse. It's the mirrored field with a frosted field. Uh, excuse me, a mirrored design with a frosted field. It's beautiful. Good looking coin. So to everybody, we'll give a zoom in here. So this coin um, is a gift for people who donate $125 or more to the Lake Tahoe Environmental Education Fund. And that benefits a bunch of environmental education programs in Tahoe, such as the Keep Tahoe Blue, Eyes on the Lake program, the Take Care Tahoe, uh, the Washoe Tribe, and the Nevada Museum. Yeah, there we go. And then back.
back over to that lake. Yeah. There we go. This is beautiful. Thank you, guys. Nice. It really turned out what a nice. great partnership. I think this machine does a wonderful job for 152 years old. Absolutely. Oh, and I should mention, it also benefits the Lake Tahoe's environmental newspaper, Tahoe in Depth, which is published through the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency. Excellent. The other thing everybody has to keep in mind is this is really a piece of history. This couldn't be a more historic little uh, gem to take home. Absolutely.